Rub up your engines. Ruben Tatum says, hey, Scotty, what do you think of a two? 2020 Mustang going electric. We know a lot of companies are going electric. I know Porsche is going electric with some of them, but like anything else, they're testing the waters for electric cars. And look at Ford. Mustang's the only car they make anymore. Everything else is SUVs and trucks. So, yeah, give it a try. They might see. And uh, they do have an insane acceleration, that top-of-the-line Tesla. It's the fastest car out there, really. It's faster than a Dodge Hellcat. Electric motors have full torque. As soon as you turn them on, they don't have to rev up, and they go really fast. But, you know, I mean, most people buy Mustangs because they make cool noises. And if you got an electric motor, it doesn't make any noise. They probably would have to make them where they had speakers in so it sounded the same as the V8 engines. <laughs> Derek Norman says, Should I buy a 2013 Honda Accord with 27,000 miles? It has a 2017 front end. He wants nine grand. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. If it's a 2013 Accord and it's got a 2017 front end, that means the car's been wrecked. <laughs> Never buy a wrecked car, especially not for $9,000. Stay away from modern-day wrecked cars. 2013 is still a relatively modern car. When they're wrecked, there's no saying what happens to the electronic systems over time. They're so complex with those CAN bus wiring and computer modules, everyone. I would not touch it for the 10-foot pole. Norbit's car review says my 2016 Nissan Versa. The key does not want to turn the steering wheel. It's not locked what could it be the problem if the key won't turn your tumbler inside the lock there isn't working right if you can't turn it now my first advice is always have more than one key for your car each of my cars i got at least three sets of keys because i know what a hassle it is if you lose one or if the old one wears out whenever i get them and it happens to me because hey i'm driving cars that are almost 30 years old i'll go in the drawer and i'll get one of the other keys out a lot of times it'll go in it'll turn and it'll start the car then i just take the key that doesn't turn anymore and i throw it away and i take the one that works and i go to a locksmith and have them make another one so i have another spare eventually all keys wear out so if you have a spare key go right out and try that and if it works then just throw the other one away and get another one the might try spraying some WD-40. The new formula is fine for locks and it lubricates and it can a lot of time loosen the pins if they're stuck. Try that too. But it's always good to have two spare keys for your car somewhere that you know if your other key is old and it wears out, try one of those. And if they work, then throw the worn one away and then make another one when you have a chance. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Pre-Tinder Sink says, I got an 07 Corolla. The cooling fans don't come on. It doesn't overheat. And I realize the fuse are fine. If it's not overheating, odds are there's nothing wrong with the car. Cooling fans are only supposed to come on when your temperature gets to a certain range. If you're living somewhere where you're driving and whatever the temperature is outside, it doesn't get over that range. Like you say, it stays at halfway and doesn't go any further. They're working fine. How you want to try it is start the vehicle up in your driveway. Watch it with it running. And if you see, it starts to go over halfway and starts to get towards the H and the fans don't come on, you do have a problem. It's almost impossible for a modern day car, if it's like 80, 90 degrees outside, to sit there for two hours running without it running hot if the fans don't come on. So do that test to see if they're coming on. Because if it's not overheating, odds are they are coming on every once in a while. Kick ass 122112 says Scotty. I got an 07 Infiniti G35X. I had the wheel bearing replaced and hear a slight whirling noise. Could this be the new bearing? I also have winter tires. Take the winter tires off. See if that makes a difference. A lot of times it's tires making a noise. Bearings shouldn't make any noise at all. You put regular tires on, you still get a worry noise, take it back. Wheel bearings should make no noise, and it's very important when you have wheel bearings put on that they're torqued correctly. Because if they torque them too tight, the new bearings will whir from the beginning and they're going to wear out real fast. I see that all the time. People say, Scotty, uh, last year I had wheel bearings put on and they're gone again. And I explain, whoever put them on made them too tight. And then they wore out. And conversely, if they're too loose, they'll wobble around too. They have to be just right. That's why I use a torque wrench on them when you put them on. E-Rock says, Scotty, does it matter when you change the oil if it's hot or cold? It's best to change it when it's warm. Cold, it's cold, it's thicker, and it's harder for it to drain out. And it takes a lot of time. If you do it on an ice cold engine, it might take half an hour. Most people aren't going to wait. If you do it when it's hot, it'll drain out the fastest, but then you might burn your hands. So it's best to like drive the car around and then let it sit for maybe 20, 30 minutes. It's still going to be plenty warm and it'll drain out best that way. When it's really cold, it's very hard to get it all out. Try it that way when it's warm. That's what I do. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.